beautiful, beautiful plaza. We are in Salta, beautiful, beautiful Salta, Argentina. It is a very efficient way to make a city. The Spanish conquistador who founded the city here for the Spanish. So that was the original point of founding this city. It is muy, muy linda. Hello everyone, welcome to Salta, Argentina. We are in Salta, beautiful, beautiful Salta, Argentina, right here in Plaza Nueve de Julio, the center plaza of Salta. Take a look. It's a beautiful, beautiful plaza. Reminds me quite a bit of the center plaza of Cuenca, Ecuador, when we were there, mainly because uh, there's such amazing architecture around here, colonial architecture. And today, we're gonna explore a little bit more around the center here in Salta, and talk a little bit more about the really interesting history of Salta and uh, what there is to do and see around here. So come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you wanna help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. So like I said, very beautiful, beautiful colonial architecture down here in the center of Salta. And that's because Salta, like a lot of the places we visited, was founded by the Spanish as a colonial settlement during the, the colonial period in like the 1580s. Now, we know a little bit about Salta, actually, from a previous video. And we made a video when we were in Cordoba about a guy named Jeronimo Luis de Cabrera, who was actually in uh, 1573, I think, he founded the city of Cordoba for the Spanish. And his original mission, as he was assigned by uh, the Viceroy of Peru, um, was a, uh, Toledo, Viceroy Toledo. Uh, his original mission was to found a city here in the Valley of Salta. And he disobeyed the Viceroy's uh, order and went down further south to Cordoba and founded a city there. And for that, he was punished very, very swiftly. If you want, there's a video about that. Very interesting. Link in the description. Check it out. But later, about 10 years later in 1582, the city here of Salta was founded. And it was founded, the name is something very long in Spanish, something like uh, La Ciudad de San Felipe y... Hernan de Lerma, or um, Hernando de Lerma en el Valle de Salta. Basically like the city of St. Philip and, and Hernando Lerma in the city or in the Valley of Salta. But they just call it Salta now. Another thing they call it, a nickname, is La Linla, which means the pretty or the lovely. And as you can see by the architecture all around this square, it is muy, muy linda. Everywhere I went in Argentina, in our previous visit here, in our current visit, everybody tells, tells me, you gotta go to Salta, it's so beautiful. So we did, we're here in Salta. And let me tell you, it does not disappoint. It's very, very beautiful. Now, we've actually been here in Salta for about a week and a half, and I haven't made uh, any videos because I was really sick <laughs> when I got here. When we got here, I had taken um, a flight from Rosario that had to like lay over back in Buenos Aires overnight. So I was awake for like, I don't know, like 36 hours or so. Uh, Cause I couldn't, I couldn't sleep in the airport. And when I came here, I just like got into the, uh, the place where we're staying, just fell asleep immediately. And uh, when I woke up like 14 hours later, I was sick. So that was not good. Got very sick. <laughs> Uh, and I was sick for about like a week and a half or so, but I'm feeling much better now. The weather um, has decided to cooperate 
Actually, during the time we were sick, it was kind of cold here, a little bit chilly. But it is springtime now. It's the very beginning of springtime here in Salta. And today, the weather is absolutely gorgeous today. I mean, really gorgeous. It's like 22, 23 degrees Celsius, which is like 72 or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Beautiful, sunny, super sunny, not a cloud in the sky. And uh, a great day to come out and check out the Centro of Salta. Now, the reason, like I said, it's called La Linda is because of all the old, beautiful colonial architecture, like this building right here, which is the Cabildo, the original, like, governmental building of Salta. And this building is actually quite old. Um, it, uh, I think it's from, like, the 1700s. It's colonial-style architecture, really beautiful. And what's interesting about Salta is there's colonial style architecture like this that's been preserved um, by decree of a former governor from back in the day like in the late Spanish colonial era in the late 1700s they decreed that all the colonial architecture should be preserved but interestingly in Salta there's also a mix of the more like neoclassical style architecture like this building right over here that we had walked past but also like a really interesting neo-colonial style architecture which is something that like we haven't really seen fully in a lot of places in uh, that we've been in not just in Argentina but like in South America as well and what it is it's basically like stuff that's built in the late 1800s well into the independence period the republic period of Argentina but it's built in the style of old Spanish colonial architecture like uh this building over here, there's a church, the Basilica Catedral de Salta, which looks like it's, you know, from the 1600s. It looks super old, but it's actually from the 1800s. There it is right there. And uh, you can see there's some orange trees growing here. I mean, it really is a very, very beautiful, beautiful city, especially in this downtown uh, central part. But here it is, the Basilica Catedral de Salta. And like I said, this is a neo-colonial neo architecture. So it was actually built in during the Republic era. Well, that, the great thing about that is all of the architecture just really, um, like it matches, you know what I mean? Gives the whole centro, historical center part, its own very cool vibe. That's why I remind, it reminds me a lot of uh, when we were in Cuenca. Because in Cuenca, in the center, historical center, um, it's a UNESCO preserved uh, site, UNESCO heritage site. So all of the actual colonial architecture is preserved. Now here in Salt, it's a little different. There is actual colonial architecture that's been preserved, but some of the newer architecture that's been mixed in is neo-colonial. So it looks like uh, it looks like this. There's actually another church about um, a couple blocks off the plaza that's also neo-colonial. So this church here, for example, the Basilica de San Francisco. This is actually a neo-colonial 
So this was built in like the uh, 1800s, I believe. But it's definitely, yeah, let's see, there's a sign on this side, 1882. So even though it looks like it's a colonial style, it's actually neo-colonial. It was built during the independence period after, uh, after a Spanish colonial era. There's a statue in front, San Francisco. Really is a beautiful, beautiful church. I think the church is open. Let's see if we can just go inside real quick. We'll just poke in real quick, we'll be quiet. And we'll see what it looks like inside. So we can walk around a little bit more, talk a little bit more about the really interesting history of Salta. Now, like I mentioned, uh, it was originally founded back in like the 1580s, right? 1582, I believe, It's the foundation of Salta by Hernando de Lerma. That's the guy who founded it, Hernando de Lerma. And um, originally, like I said, when Jeronimo Luis de Cabrera was sent out to originally found a city here. The goal was to uh, to make a city that would sort of connect uh, the different provinces around here. There were settlements in other provinces south of here in Tucumán and Argentina, but also up north there was a major city um, in uh, what is now Bolivia, right? And it's now the city of Sucre. Back then it was called La Plata, which is confusing because there is a city here in Argentina called La Plata. It's the capital of Buenos Aires province. It's near Buenos Aires city. Uh, but that's not the La Plata we're talking about. La Plata, from back in the Spanish colonial days, was the city of Sucre, north of here in Bolivia. And the thing was, is there were still native populations here who were not too happy about the Spanish being here. And there were many uprisings, and many wars being fought with those indigenous populations. And so they needed to put up settlements um, near enough to each other that if one were attacked, uh, another city would be able to like raise forces to reinforce them. And this area in Salta here was kind of like a big gap where there was no city between the province of Tucumán in the south and in what is now Bolivia in the north. So that was the original point of founding this city was to uh, create sort of a stopover point for military aid, for trading between the provinces in the north and the provinces further south. And then by the time they actually founded uh, Salta here in like 1582, uh, Buenos Aires had already been founded in 1580, the second foundation of Buenos Aires. Now Buenos Aires has two foundation dates, one in 1536 that didn't work, and then one in 1580 that did work. I have a whole video about where I talk about that. 
uh, video about Argentina and Spain. I'll link that down in the description as well. But this could then serve, this city of Salta could then serve as a stopover point on the long trip from Peru, which was the center of Spanish America, basically, the power center of Spanish America, all the way down to Buenos Aires, the, uh, you know, the port city, the estuary, Buenos Aires. So Salta, over the years, over the centuries of Spanish colonial rule became like a very, very, very important city because everything trading from like the southern provinces here up to the north in Bolivia and also from like the power center in Lima in Peru going down to Buenos Aires to the port on the eastern coast of the continent everything kind of came through Salta so it's a very very important city and unfortunately for Salta it actually had become a major a site because it was so important where many battles were fought and one of them the Battle of Salta during the wars for independence uh, is something that we're gonna make a whole video about this is very interesting so look out for that but it created a lot of history here in Salta it uh, gave rise to the stories of many many famous heroes here in Salta of whom we are probably gonna make some videos specifically about them as well but also, in the uh, post-independence era, just after the Wars of Independence, it meant that Salta, uh, the city, was pretty devastated. Um, it was damaged heavily, a lot of buildings were destroyed, and even though they're able to maintain some of the colonial uh, buildings from, you know, way back in the day, the original colonial buildings, a lot of them were destroyed. And the economic fortune of Salta was really going downhill in the early part of the independence uh, era during the civil wars in the early 1800s and also during the early republic era in like the mid 1800s the uh, Salta was not the economic powerhouse that it once was until the late 1800s when the railway came through here they extended the railway to Salta and it brought with it tons of economic opportunity major major um, immigration anyway here we are like about a block off of the uh, about a block off of the plaza the central plaza and uh, the whole central area of course like even not just on the plaza but like the surrounding areas major commercial district just like it is in most cities with the same sort of foundation history as Salta that we visited because you know you know how the Spanish do right they come in they settle down they fight a war with the natives they take over some land and then uh, they plop down a checkerboard grid of blocks they build a church they build a cabildo right the uh, the uh, government building and then they expand out and so this center part, the centro neighborhood, is uh, now like a major commercial district for Salta where lots of people visit to come, not just to visit like the, uh, you know, old buildings, the Cabildo, the museums, lots of museums around here, but also, you know, to come down here and shop. There's uh, all kinds of shopping and commercial and whatnot, commercial stuff around here. Now, actually, I think we're going to turn back and go back towards uh, the Centro because that uh, Cabildo is actually now a museum. It's a uh, history museum for the region. And I'd be really interested to go in there and check it out. Just take a quick pass through there and see what's going on in there. As we head back to the center, Plaza Nueve de Julio, you can see off in the distance, there's uh, this big hill right out there, sort of on the edge of the city. And that's uh, San Bernardo Hill, which is a very, very important hill because that uh, was a major, uh, 
was a major point of contention in the Battle of Salta. The Battle of Salta was, fi was uh, fought over that hill, basically. And you can actually go up to the top of it by uh, Teleferico. It's very similar to like um, Volcan Pichincha in Quito, right? The mountain in Quito, where the famous Battle of Pichincha was fought. And uh, we're gonna make a whole video about that. We're gonna go up to the top. We're gonna check it out. We're gonna talk about the Battle of Salta and uh, get a great view from up there on top of that hill. You can imagine like seeing how close it is to the city and how high up it is. You can just imagine how great the view is from up there. Anyway, we're back here on the uh, Plaza Nueve de Julio and the Cabildo is right over there. So let's go over and just poke our heads in and see, uh, see what they got in there. Museo Histórico del Norte. 75th anniversary this year, 1949 to 2024. All right, we made it inside. It is a museum, the history of the north, the whole northern region here in Argentina, and uh, it's free to get in, so very cool. Start off here with, of course, the pre-Columbian, pre-Spanish colonial era. cool stuff in here. I always like looking at this, the old, um, like pre-Columbian stuff that's been preserved. A lot of it recovered from, you know, like archeological dig sites like this. But some of the stuff that's preserved is not in the greatest condition, but some of it is in like impeccable condition, which I always think is just so amazing. Very cool. So they have some more in here. Now I've seen a lot of stuff like this in previous videos. We've been to a bunch of different places where there's uh, pre-Columbian art and pre-Columbian artifacts like this. Mainly the pre-Columbian art museum in Santiago in Chile and also the Museum of Gold and Weapons of the World in Lima, Peru. I'll link both those videos down below. You can check those out because there's a lot of cool stuff that we saw in those two museums. And of course, the cool thing about this, like because it's in the Cabildo, right, is like it's a, it, it's itself a historical artifact, right? The building is from the colonial, Spanish colonial era. And it has that Spanish colonial building style, right? With the courtyards in the middle like this. I've seen lots of buildings like this. Uh, in Cordoba, the Jesuit block. I've seen people's houses that are built in this style. Like uh, Rafael de Sobramante in Cordoba and uh, Juan, uh, Juan Pueyrredon in, um, in, where were we, we start Pueyrredon? Oh, that was in San, San Isidro, Buenos Aires. Anyway, links, of course, to everything in the description. So this is like the, oh yeah the original like construction of this building. Some of the artifacts from the original construction. It's very cool. Of course, this thing's been restored, you know, over the years, but even though they restored it, maintains the same style, same architectural style. All these old iron, locks and keys. This is cool. These old keys, I always think old keys like this are very cool. You know, coming from the United States, keys in the United States look like this. But um, it's cool to see old keys like this. What's really interesting, I think, about Argentina is like the keys in Argentina, even the, you know, for like modern buildings, like for example, here's my key to my apartment, right? Where I'm staying. Like, look at this. The 
keys look like this, which is very, very different from the, the way a key looks when you get keys in the United States. So it's kind of cool. Every time I've been to Argentina, everywhere I've stayed, they've given me keys that look like that. Hola, ¿qué tal? Uh, here we go. Recreation of like a bedroom. Typical bedroom from the end of the 19th century. So like the 1800s, late 1800s. What is this? Teololito y tripod. Tripode. A tripod and uh, Teodolito? What is a Teodolito? Telescope, maybe? Pretty cool. Oh, here's an old, old map of Salta. Yeah, so there it is, the, the center, Plaza Principal de la Ciudad. So that's, of course, the uh, plaza that we're on right now, Plaza Nueve de Julio. It's just built out, built out in a checkerboard pattern. It is a very efficient way to make a city. It is very efficient, and it's just the way that the Spanish always did it. Every every map of a Spanish colonial uh, city from all over, not just Argentina, but from like everywhere, it always looks like that. Basically, it's just built out in. Uh, Let's see, it looks like upstairs, colonial period. We'll look up here and see what's up here. But yeah, the cities are always just built out in that checkerboard pattern. And the maps always look the same. It's hard to tell what map you're looking at. Whether it's uh, Santiago de Chile or Lima in Peru, Cordoba, or any of, the, any of the cities that we visited. The old colonial founded cities. Hard to tell what you're looking at without them without actually reading and seeing if the map is like named. We're up here on the second floor. Beautiful view of the plaza. That was something actually that made uh, Rosario really interesting. The two cities so far that I think have been sort of very, very different from the other cities we visited is Rosario in Argentina and Mendoza, Argentina. Mendoza because there's a huge earthquake that, you know, like in the 1860s, I want to say 1861, just destroyed the whole, the whole city and they had to basically like rebuild the whole thing. And when they rebuilt it, they rebuilt it in a different style, in a more modern style. So it doesn't really look like a colonial city. And then Rosario, which wasn't actually made a city until like 1853, and the uh, the end of the wars for or the uh, like civil war in Argentina, so it didn't really start growing into a city until the late 1800s. So it has a very very different style. A lot of like old religious art and artifacts here. see though the old architecture style with the beams the wooden beams very cool there's a clearly a famous chair here which you know somebody sat there someone's famous someone's famous bottom so we can head over now to another plaza it's really nearby. It's a couple blocks over. It's Plaza Manuel Belgrano. But on the way over, it's got this really cool building that uh, is actually just like a Argentine government building. I think it's like uh, something to do with the uh, Ministry of Finance. But it's a super cool building. And I uh, just wanted to get a quick shot of it. 
as we walk on over to uh, Plaza, Plaza Manuel Belgrano. Get an even better shot from over on this other corner. Very cool. Now, uh, of course, Manuel Belgrano, you may remember from some of the videos we made in other places, mainly in Rosario, because uh, Belgrano, very famous general from the independence era, from the wars of independence, and he was the uh, general who planted the flag, the first flag, right across from the flag monument, across the uh, Rio Paraná. In the first video we made from Rosario, about the flag monument in Rosario, I'll link that in the description, you can check it out. But Manuel Belgrano, very, very important uh, historical figure here, and he's important not just to Rosario, but he's important here in Salta too, because the Battle of Salta, like I mentioned earlier in the video, that was fought here during the Wars for Independence, he was the general who was in charge of leading the uh, Patriot forces, the uh, forces who were fighting against the uh, Spanish. And in the battle here, the where the Patriots were victorious here in Salta, um, he, he's a very important figure here as well. So much so that there's a plaza named after him just a couple blocks off of the, uh, the main Plaza Nueve de Julio right here. So let's go check it out. Here we are, Plaza General Manuel Belgrano. Which I think just a few blocks uh, northeast, no, northwest of the central Plaza Nueve de Julio. And you can see well beyond the fountain here, there is a statue of the man himself, Manuel Belgrano. This is a very nice plaza as well, actually, very beautiful. Looks like there's a nice hotel on the plaza. It's a nice fountain here. And is this Manuel Belgrano? Hmm, hold on a second. Let's just make sure. Batalla de Tucumán, 24th of September, 1812. Yeah, this has got to be him. Yeah. A la gloria inmortal del general Manuel Bergrano. To the immortal glory of Manuel Belgrano. There he is. And like I said, very famous, very famous guy, very important to the uh, independence, wars for independence here in Argentina. And we're going to make a whole video about the Battle of uh, the Battle of Salta here, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. It's a very nice plaza here. I think one more thing that we want to see here. And then we're going to end it. There's another plaza about three blocks north of here. And it's a plaza uh, dedicated to General um, Martin Miguel de Guemes, who is another general, very famous, specifically here in Salta during the Wars of Independence. That guy, I've done a little bit of research about him, and that guy is a total badass and we're definitely going to be making a video about him because he's really important specifically to Salta in the context of the War of Independence but like right up here about three blocks up there's a there is a plaza named after him and I want to go check that out that'll be the last thing that we do here we can wrap up our video our first video from here in Salta all right coming up on the plaza right here it's beautiful architecture, these buildings that are kind of close to the plaza. And because I mentioned before, there's a mix of colonial architecture and neo-colonial architecture. You never know what it is. Why these like neo-colonial buildings? Why they colonial architecture buildings? Who knows? They're very cool looking. It gives the whole centro area around here 
a very, very cool feel, a mix of the different types of architecture. Let's get across the street and not get run over. And here we are, Plaza General Don Martin Miguel de Güemes. Now, like I mentioned, we're gonna make a whole video about this guy. Because from what I've learned so far about him, he was a total badass. And uh, he's got a really cool story. So we're gonna make a video about him. But I wanted to come to the plaza here, it's named after him, and see what's in it. Because actually, one of the interesting things I think about this plaza is, you think that if there's a plaza, right, Plaza General Don, Miguel, uh, Don Martin Miguel de Güemes, that like right in the middle, of course, there would be, you know, what would you expect? A statue of General Don uh, Martin Miguel de Güemes. But there actually isn't. In this plaza, there is a big flagpole, which uh, I guess would usually be flying the Argentine flag, but for some reason today, it is not. There is a statue of a guy kind of a famous guy who we've uh, talked about already in this video and he's here in this plaza somewhere and I want to find him he's either here in this plaza or like just next door on the other side of this building here oh no here he is yeah here he is right here So like I said, there is a statue of a guy, and uh, he's a famous guy. He's a guy we've talked about in this video already, but he's not uh, General Don Martin Miguel de Güemes. He is Don Hernando de Lerma, the Spanish conquistador who founded the city here for the Spanish in 1582. There he is. I find it kind of weird that that uh, you have a statue to uh, Hernando de Lerma in this plaza that's named after uh, Martin Miguel de Güemes. But, you know, what are you gonna do? It's right across from this really cool looking building over here that I have no idea what it is. Legislatura Provincial. Oh, so this is the Provincial Legislature building. Interesting. Well, I think I've seen, uh, seen what we came here to see. I've seen enough for this video, so we'll end it right here, right in front of the statue behind us of uh, Don Hernando de Lerma. Well, that'll be it. I think we're going to see a lot of really interesting stuff here at Salta. You know, like I said, started out, I was sick here for like a week and a half, which gave me actually plenty of time to do a lot of research about Salta figure out what are the cool things and the interesting things to see here in Salta and I've got a lot of stuff planned and hopefully it's all gonna work out but that's gonna be it for this video I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully you'll stick around to see the rest of the interesting stuff that we see here in Salta and uh, with that we'll see you next time <laughs>